Welcome back to Pennsylvania Outdoor Life. If you're out scouting, you're out having some fun listening for turkeys, good luck next Saturday, the opening day. Remember, it's got to have a beard. You've got to make sure that it is a gobbler. In fact, identify your target. All of the safety things that we kept, keep hearing and hearing and hearing about, and yet every now and then there's a tragic accident. Now, the newest employee at Top Calls, Mike Hobbins, was involved in a tragic accident. He's blind, he's an employee, and he has one heck of a story to share. Born and raised into a hunting family? Yeah, yeah. My stepfather, he, he's the one who taught me how to hunt, and I'm glad about that, yeah. And um, I, I understand you had a passion for turkey hunting. I did. It was, well, the spring, you know, every, the, everything's new and you get to get out in the woods finally after a long winter and it's just it's beautiful and then there's especially if you get to hear turkeys gobbling that's that's really special yeah so deer and turkey yes i like archery hunting a lot the sitting around the home at home listening to radio or tv all day that kind of gets boring and I, I mean a lot boring and uh like we talked earlier my sister and russ's wife work together and they must have talked about that Russ needed help here, and my sister asked if I would be interested, and I'm saying, well, yeah, because <laughs> I knew Russ's business here, and I thought, that, that, that's got to be a lot better than what I'm doing. So that's how that all started. On these, there's a, a hen on this side, and they want the hen on the right side and the gobbler on the, on the left, so I can feel this, the engraving, so I know which end the, the lid's supposed to go on now. I've got to find the lids. There, I found it. Then you take a screw. And a spring. Sounds good to me, buddy. <laughs> and you're working full time for these guys. And, the, and of, of all the environments that I could think about working, this is one that's just an awesome environment. It is. Uh, like I said, it's, it's more like going to the cabin every day than going to work. It's, it's fun and I mean, you get to play with turkey calls and <laughs> deer call. It. You know, you get to hear all that all day long and it's, it's, it's good, real good. It didn't take him long to get oriented to the shop, and it's he knows his way around here. It's actually sometimes I forget that you know he's, he's actually uh, doesn't have his eyesight. So what is this that you're going to do now? This is the lanyard jig that Russ had made up, and it's uh, pretty pretty nice. <laughs> you use the the crimp clip or whatever, and that fits in this right there in that spot, and then pull this around that pin and through the clip and around. Around this pin and out there, and back into the crimp, and then there's a clamp here to hold it down so it doesn't move. And we'll give it a little tug and we'll cut it. Bring that one into the crimp. Then there's a spring that goes to it. There you go. Since yeah. August, I bet you he's made 50,000 lanyards for us. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. Mike lost his vision 11 years ago, and he openly shares his story. Well, it was May 1st, 2010, which was the first day of Spring Gobbler, like this year's May 1st is the first day, but uh, we went hunting where we usually go archery hunting, and uh, I was set up along a field. It was a real long field, grass field, and at the end of it was wooded area also. As it got light out, a turkey started gobbling a lot, like really a lot. So I figured there was another hunter over there that had him wound up, but I thought, well, this is kind of neat. So I sat there and it stopped and I figured it flew down. So I thought, I'll, I'll just give a call and see what happens. Well, I gave a call and it just answered right back really, really a lot. 
So I thought maybe there's more than one turkey. I didn't, I didn't know. So I, I sat there and uh, waited some more and called again. He gobbled right back again. So I thought this is getting pretty interesting. So eventually I noticed him at the other end of the field. It was just one turkey, nice long beard, and here he come, all strutting, strutting and walking slowly and working his way over. And uh, he got to maybe 50, 60 yards from me before he entered the woods where I was. And uh, he, he, he got quiet then. He didn't, once he entered the woods, he got quiet. I was hoping he'd circle down towards me, but he went the other way. And I, I still was very happy about the whole experience. It was beautiful. So uh, later on, I was getting ready to go uh, meet my sons back at the truck at a time that we said we'd meet. And uh, I headed back the trail that I came in on and I rounded a turn and that's when the hunter saw movement and he shot me on this side of my face. And uh, obviously I went down and he did stay with me and called for help, which I'm very happy about and appreciate very much. And the uh, emergency team and the EMTs and the uh, ambulances came and they took me down the, the ridge to a lower field to the to uh, the life flight that was waiting there. And uh, I remember the uh, EMT asking if I was having trouble breathing, which I was, and I said yes. And they, they put me under and put that uh, breathing tube down my throat. And at that time, I could still see out of my left eye. But after that, that was, that was the end of that. I haven't seen since. I have no vision, no light perception. Totally blind. Yes. When you decided that you weren't gonna let, you, let that keep you down, how did that happen? Well, it took a while, but there was a lot of counselors in the community around here has been very supportive of me and and helped a lot in it. I mean, I went to school for the blind, which helped a lot out in Pittsburgh, and uh, just slowly it just gets better and better. And Mike now has a PowerPoint presentation that a teacher friend of his put together. He uses it at hunter education classes. I give you a mic, an open microphone. Um, ask you if there's a single solitary message that you'd like to send to our viewers. I would appreciate you doing that. Yep, it's the same message I send at the Buffalo Valley Sportsman's Club when we talk, and it's just to identify your target. It's so easy. It doesn't take long. To identify your target and whatever's behind it, too. Make sure you know what's behind your target, but it doesn't take that long. Thanks for sharing, buddy. You're welcome. I'm a better man for knowing you. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. You know, Mike, thank you for sharing your story. And I hope that you people at home understand the importance of identifying your target. Make sure you practice all of this because once you squeeze that trigger, you cannot take back the pellets or the bullet. Identify your target. We're gonna take a short break and we'll be right back. <laughs> 